All right, everyone, we'll just give a few seconds here for people to get started and get into the uh, webinar. Okay, well, thanks for joining me again today. Today is day number 19 of the 30 Day Profit Challenge. Really excited for you to be here today and uh, trying a little experiment today. I've got you registered here on the Zoom, but I'm gonna do this live on Facebook as well today, just to see how it works, see how it rolls. So by all means, if there's any sort of technical glitches, um, bear with me as uh, first time I'm trying this out, but uh, excited for it today. So today we are in day 19. Again, we're in this 30 day profit challenge. And uh, basically what we're gonna explore today is we're gonna talk a bit more about shoppers and how do we convert those into buyers. And so we've been working our way through the conversion funnel and trying to get a little bit more granular in terms of what the different conversion rates look like in your conversion funnel. So today we're gonna dive in a little bit further and get a little bit more granular, a little more detailed into the conversion funnel. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Just switch to the screen share here and off we go. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're in day number 19. Today we're talking about shoppers to buyers and how do we get more people to actually put that, ready to put down their credit card and adding things to their cart. So today, what we've really been looking at is we've been working our way through, we looked at the visitors that are visiting all your pages, browsers who are visiting category pages. Today we're talking about shoppers that have made it to product detail pages and making them buyers that are willing to add things to your cart. So with that, what we're gonna look at today is to go back to our store example and imagine where we've been at in sort of the journey so far. So this is that sample store that we've been taking a look at. And what we've been under looking at is, is, okay, so if I visit the website, I'm just a visitor. I've come to the website and I'm thinking about maybe shopping around at your store, but I'm not quite 100% sure yet. So we would call you a visitor at this point. Now, if you show any sort of interest in looking at a product, so you've displayed a product to someone, and you've clicked into the looking at more product, we would call you now a browser. And a browser is someone that you've basically come into the site and you're starting to look around and browse around at some specific products. Again, it's like going into the men's department or the women's department, or maybe the cell phone department of your electronics store or the TV section of your favorite electronics store, whatever that might be. If it's uh, whatever it is, you're starting to see products put in front of you. Now, if we go a little bit further, if someone is looking around and they decide, hey, this product looks interesting to me, I wanna pick it up off the shelf, or in this case, click through to look at it in more, more detail, we're now considering you a shopper. And this is what we looked at yesterday, where you're now interested in some products. So you're shopping around, you're interested in maybe this bracelet, for example, or maybe it's that particular widget that you sell, it's a bag of tea, maybe it's a, I don't know, it could be some sort of widget, it could be a TV, it could be a T-shirt, whatever that article might be, they're now showing an interest and they're now a shopper. But realistically, the people that are most, we're, we really want to focus on and people that are willing to put down their credit card or they're willing to say, hey, this is something I'm really interested in. And in a traditional shopping sense, in a real world example, that's when someone would add it to their cart. And so you notice in e-commerce, a lot of times you see this button called add to cart. Those are people that are willing to say, yeah, I'm interested in this product. I'm going to put it into my shopping cart. So if we add to cart, we now have that bracelet sitting in our shopping cart, or in this case, a little shopping bag up in the top right hand corner. And you can, if you click on that bag, you'll be able to see it a little bit more detail. You can see all the things that you would currently have in your shopping cart. So now I'm a buyer. I am ready to buy something because I've signaled to you saying, hey, guess what? I'm going to take this product. I like it. I'm interested in it. And I'm now going to add it to my cart. So now I'm considered a buyer in any commerce sense. So that's where things are kind of going a little bit deeper into the relationship. Tomorrow, what we're gonna look at is we'll look at the checkout process and sort of some of the pages there. But for now, what I wanna do is take you through again, some of the math that we've been looking at to understand how do we look at this in the conversion rate context. So yesterday and the day before, we looked at sort of the conversion funnel. We started off by looking at visitors to browsers, which gives us a conversion rate of traffic over product impressions. Then yesterday, we looked at browsers to shoppers and what that product impression looks like over a product view. And so today what we're gonna look at is 
those shoppers to becoming buyers. And so that when they are ready to buy, we've got a, what we call a product view to add to cart conversion rate, which in this case, I'm using again that 50% example, because we're trying to get down to that sort of aspirational 3% that Amazon is, is kind of known for in the e-commerce world. And so to do the math, it's again, very quite simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look to the left-hand side here, first of all, maybe on your right, but uh, in my case, it's on the left. And uh, here what we've got is we've got shoppers to buyers. And so all we're doing is we're simply taking our buyers over top of our shoppers. So in our example, we had 125,000 buyers over 250,000 shoppers. And so those are the number of people that have added to cart versus the number of people that have just visited products. And so this is currently sitting at a 50% conversion rate. Similarly, on the right-hand side of the equation, we've got sort of a running sum or running total of, the, of looking at the top end of the funnel. And now we're all the way down to the buyer stage. And so from a buyer to visitor percentage, we wanna start looking at what does that percentage look like? And so what we've got is we've got buyers over visits. And in that case, the, the same 125,000 buyers are gonna be taken over the 1 million uh, visitors that we've had visiting the website. So that's gonna yield us a 12.5% visits to buyers conversion rate, or in this case, visits to add to cart. Okay, makes sense so far? Hopefully it's all coming, coming together for you. Now, what we would do is if we go back to that Google Analytics example, and again, Google Analytics is a tool that I use and a lot of other people use. Uh, it's probably used by about 70% of the people that use a website these day and age. But what it is allows us to track the people that are visiting the different parts of the conversion funnel. And so that visitors is, would be kind of translated here to all sessions of people that have made it through the shopping funnel. We've got people that have sessions with product views. So these would be your shoppers. And now we've got our buyers, which are people that have sessions with add to cart. And so in this scenario, you can see that this percentage here is showing the running sum of the individual steps. So our visits overall to product views and then our visits overall to our add to carts. So this is sitting at about 4%. A little bit lower than that 12.5 scenario I showed you earlier. But what we can also see is that individual step of people that go from session views to sessions with add to cart, that's sitting here at about 17.94%. So you can see here that that step has quite a bit of drop off. I think a lot of people, you know, I've seen stores as low as 15 to 20%, seen stores as high as 30 to 40%. Obviously the 50% aspirationally is where most people strive to get to. And it's quite achievable to see some stores that have a 50% drop off or basically conversion rate from people that are looking and touching products. So their shoppers through to their buyers that are adding to cart. And so again, I've included the link here to this sample store that you can go and take a look at, but I will make sure I put that in the show notes as well for you so that you can see how you can actually calculate and, and look at some of this traffic in your own, on your own and also in a sample store that has real data. So that's kind of in a nutshell today's lesson. So, you know, we talked a bit about, uh, you know, the conversion funnel. We're gonna get through the last step tomorrow, which is getting into people that are in a checkout phase. You know, the customers one is a pretty obvious one, so I'm not gonna go through that. But what we will showcase tomorrow is showcase the balance of the conversion funnel, looking at how we get those buyers that have added it to cart through into checkout, and then from checkout on to completing a purchase. So that's kind of it for today. I really appreciate you watching and a thank you for bearing with me in this little experiment and trying it out on Facebook Live. So far it's been working, I think, I hope. If there's anyone on Facebook Live, give me a wave, give me a shout out, thanks for watching. But uh, in any case, I really thank you again for being here today. And as always, I ask you today to be present, connect with others and make an impact in someone's life today. So thanks for watching. I'm gonna now pause the recording pause the live stream and I will take on any questions from anyone that might be there.